I talk about the torticollis. Um, same thing, I'll talk about chief complaint, history exam, diagnosis, between bony, non-bony. Talk about imaging, treatment follow-up. This is really cool makeup, check that out. Torticollis means twisted neck. So basically, the pants will come in. I think, I think most of the time, they'll speak and be like, why is my kid's t head tilted? And they're gonna come here like, what's wrong with my kid? His heads keep tilting. Or they have scoliosis, or they're just gonna say my child looks weird, or they're gonna come in and say neck problem, or they're gonna say like, oh, the shoulders don't look the same. And so they're kind of like, I guess, things to think about when, uh, when a parent comes in and says those things. And you just want to take a history. You want to find out like when it started. I think age is a big thing when working up uh, head tilt. And then did it happen at birth? Did it happen like a long time after birth? You really want to ask them if there's a recent illness or cold, um, which I'll get into next. And then you know, add, make sure their development's going okay. If it's like neurological, see if they're in any pain or irritable. Ask if they have headaches. Sometimes it's just self-limiting. Ask them if the head tilt just goes away on its own or it comes back if it's intermittent. And then exam, a lot of times with the congenital muscular torticollis, this classic is just head tilt and it's rotation. So it's, you're kind of like, it's like you're dodging. It's like a basketball is coming at your face and you're like dodging it. Like your head's turning away, but your face is still like looking at the ball. So you're, like you're tilting your head, but you're actually turning your face toward the, the middle. And that's just because of tight muscle. And uh, you want to see if, it's tilted without rotation or with rotation. You want to see if it's correctable, if it's stiff, if it's painful. Neuro exam, eye exam. And then so there's a bunch of reasons you could have like head tilt in these kids. But mainly, I think we'll focus on these three. There's, there's a bunch of other random stuff that you only get to see if you're really lucky. But we'll talk about atlantoaxial rotator subluxation, muscular torticollis, and neurologic causes. Um, focus on this one first. This is Atlantoaxial rotatory subluxation. It's a displacement. There's other like names. They say atlantoaxial rotatory displacement, rotatory fixation, dislocation. You diagnose it with a ro dynamic rotation CT. You take, you just isolate C1 2, and it's like uh, you know C1's rotating. It's an atlas, right? It's rotating on C2, and uh, basically this 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 little peg, which is the C2 dense. This should be like in the same place, but when you turn your head, it's in a different place. But when you're, you know, when you imagine like a wheel on an axle, it's, the axle stays in the same place while the wheel's turning, but here it's not. And then you usually ask to ask them if there's any recent trauma or upper respiratory infection, because you can have something called Greisel syndrome. And so this, the atlas will dislocate because of hyperemic tissues and inflammation, infection. So you can have like tonsil surgery or you can have an upper respiratory infection and they, they end up like this and the head's tilted and the parent's wondering why. So, but you really wanna ask them if they had any recent stuff like this because the treatment algorithm is like very time sensitive. This is the, the treatment algorithm. For the first week, if they have symptoms for one week, you can just give them a soft collar. And then by the time you're at two weeks of symptoms, they were recommending hospital admission, cervical traction, and like a muscle relaxant. And then by the time you're at like, you know, six weeks of symptoms, now you're recommending, you know, a surgery C12 fusion or occiput something fusion. Then you lose like 50% of your neck motion. So it'd be nice to catch this early. I've, I'm pretty young, so the only time I've ever seen this, by the time it's like six weeks out. And then uh, usually they'll have uh, once you get to this point, make sure you don't have a neurologic deficit. And you could be anterior displacement. Uh, and you can still get recurrence despite. Usually you start thinking about surgery. These are indications for surgery. In neurologic deficit, anterior displacement. You can't, get you can't get it reduced. Your deformity has been over three months. And your recurrence, uh, you've had immobilization. And you've, despite six weeks of non-operative treatment, it still comes back. And basically, you know it came back because you just asked them to look one way, and then they can't. That's how you know. And then you know you treated it, because if you just ask them to look one way, then the other way, then, then that means it's fixed. But if they can't look one way, then it's not fixed. Right? So let's go on to our other diagnoses. We have our non-osseous <coughs> diagnoses. These are things that are not bony related. We have our classic congenital musculotorticollis, and maybe neurologic causes.
congenital muscular torticollis, the kid will look like this. Usually present really early, at birth, two months old. Um, there's a bunch of etiology, like reasons that it might happen, a bunch of theories like compartment syndrome of the neck, it's the intrauterine crowding, you can have some neurogenic myopathy. Some people think that you have these residual mesenchymal cells and you get fibroblast proliferation in the muscle. Either way, the muscle gets tight, right? Your sternocleidomastoid gets tight. Um, you should always check the hips. There's that 20%. Um, look for DDH. There's a relation between congenital muscular torticollis and DDH. And then you get an x-ray to rule out any osseous anomalies. Make sure it's not like uh, any of those other diagnoses I'll have at the end. And then the treatment is just stretching. Uh, some people have tried Botox. I think the jury's still out there. And then there's, then there's surgery for those resistant uh, tough cases. Um, basically, again, this is your sternocleidomastoid. They do different surgeries. Like you can cut it there, you can cut it there, you cut in the middle. And uh, this kid has both sterno, uh, congenital muscular torticollis and he's got scoliosis too. He's got a bunch of other stuff going on too that you don't have to, to deal with. Um, ultrasound, you don't have to get an ultrasound. Some people think it could be predictive uh, for the surgery, like the amount of fibrosis you see inside it. Maybe tells you if you might need surgery with this or not. The treatment is neck stretching when you see it. It begins, uh, first you keep your head in neutral position, and so this is, pretend this red line's your tight sternocleidomastoid muscle, and so you wanna turn your head toward the muscle actually, right, because your, your head's actually turned like away from it, so you wanna turn it back toward it, and then you wanna tilt it away from the muscle. So you're tilting the head away, but you're turning the face actually toward the tight muscle. All right, and then, um, I don't know, sometimes the value of stretches for self-resolution is unknown, because a lot of times these things just go away. I mean, congenital muscular torticollis will usually get better um, versus the other kind of causes for head tilt, like the bony problems, those usually get worse. That's the easier way to think about it, right? Your head tilt's getting better, it might be just the muscle. If your head tilt's getting worse and worse, it's probably some bony abnormality. So this is just the stretching maneuvers. I got it for Pinterest. And then if you really have to do surgery, you, you do surgery. I think most people like to do, a, they call it bipolar release. So you release the sternocleidomastoid at both the clavicle and the chin. Um, I think it, the recurrence rate's lower and it maintains that like sexy V-neck, you know, that V-shape in your neck. You know, there's a lot of, there's like at least 20 papers out there talking about how you can do surgery to release the muscle and like maintain that V-shape for cosmetics. And so if you cut the, like the muscle like right in the middle, I think, you lose that V shape in your neck. And some people care about that. And so that's really just how you treat congenital muscular torticollis. And then you have, well, there's videos. And then you have a bunch of neuro, neurogenic causes. To think about, like your, you can have a tumor in your spine or your brain, you can have a syrinx. You can have a, this is an Arnold Chiari malformation. I don't know how many of you have seen Arnold Chiari. This is the cerebellum, right? That's C2, and it's like, coming through your foramen magnum. You could have, it could be eye problems, right? And then I usually, usually end up diagnosing later because you usually see the head tilt, you're like, oh, it's just congenital muscular torticollis. And then, uh, and then you find out it's not because it's not getting better. And so they end up looking for other things like these, your posterior fossa tumors, right? You get, usually gives you some kind of extraocular muscle paresis, nystagmus. And uh, yeah, there's usually a delay in diagnosis. You diagnose it sometime between five months and four years old, and it might present this young. And you have your cervical tumors, but usually they have spine rigidity, deformity, they're very irritable. And uh, yeah, usually they think it's one of these things first, and they realize it's not getting better, and they realize it might be that. All right, and then you have your Arnold Chiari, the head's tilted. And you have ocular. It's usually some kind of like tilt, but there's less rotation, and usually present by one year old. You want to do an eye exam, and the diagnosis is usually some kind of congenital nystagmus, extraocular muscle paresis, and the treatment's eye surgery. Uh, that's me. I had pink eye last year. I spent a lot of time in the uh, a pediatric hospital. You get pink eye, <laughs> right? And then there's paroxysmal torticollis of infancy, which is very episodic. That's why you want to ask them in your history, history taking, whether it just goes away on its own or not. And uh, you should monitor it. There's a 29% history of migraine, self-limiting. And then there's this 
this is a diagnosis of exclusion, this thing called Sandifer syndrome, where the kid's got like some kind of GERD or hiatal hernia, and then they just, you know, their head's tilted, but it's really just because they're like posturing from like abdominal pain. This is after like, this is probably after you've diagnosed everything and like that's not it. And so this is, this is like a last ditch diagnosis. And then I went through the important stuff. I guess I have still have time. I don't know. These are the bony things that can happen that would give you a head tilt. Something called basal impression, some connection between your neck bones, some kind of problem with your dens, so the C2 or clipophile syndrome. All right, this is primarily basal imp impression. It's basically the C-spine protrudes into the skull. The C2 goes to your foramen magnum. And you have secondary reasons. I mean, by the time, by the time you could diagnose any of these things, it's gonna be like you refer the patient, you got some advanced imaging, and you notice something abnormal. So you just get, you get all those imaging, the treatment's fusion, decompression fusion. Then you have these, you can have like abnormalities where the vertebrae are fused where they're not supposed to be fused. Um, you want to look for these broad, short necks, low hairline, high scapula, toracolis. Those that would be like clipophile syndrome. A bunch of syndromes result in these these neck uh, fusions, right? You can see this. That's a fusion between between bones. That would give you a head tilt. Usually, these all get surgery. Sometimes you get this absence of C1, but usually this is gonna present like they're gonna be maybe like nine years old and then they might have a history of sternocleidomastoid release and then it just keeps coming back and everyone's like, why does it keep coming back? And then like, oh, let's finally get a CT scan. And then like, oh, there was a C-spine abnormality. And that's just what happens. You're, you know, the muscle's not tight, but your head's still tilted. I don't know why. And then you find out, you get a CT scan and you find out this is why. You can have this and more, mo more bony deformities, all just bony problems that give you head tilt, right? If you see clipophile, it looks like that. You wanna get a whole spine x-ray because there's other, there could be other abnormalities other places in the spine. You always wanna get a renal ultrasound. With these, uh, these workup for the head tilts, getting a cardiac echo, a renal ultrasound, um, eye exam, those are all helpful. And then you have problems with your os. Okay. <laughs>